Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, video games are good for your well-being, who knew, an old sauropod and Elsa. Starting off the news this week, a study published by Oxford University has looked into the mental health effects of playing video games for a prolonged time. This study was done as a reaction to the widely held belief that this kind of behaviour can be addictive and bad for players' mental health, and so Oxford University collaborated with Electronic Arts and Nintendo of America to monitor play behaviour on the games Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighbourville and Animal Crossing New Horizons respectively. The study actually found that there was a small positive relation between game time and well-being, and no link between game time and addiction and poor mental health was found. The author of this study praises it for showing that collaboration between industry partners can be done to high academic standards in an ethical and transparent fashion, and of course showing policymakers, who are often pressured to find ways to limit game time, of the true link between gameplay and mental health. If you'd like to read more about this study, as always, our sources are linked in the description. In other news, SpaceX did successfully launch its first operational crew mission to the International Space Station this week, the Falcon 9 rocket taking the four NASA astronauts to the ISS early Monday morning, in what has been described as a remarkable step forward in space travel. The astronauts weren't the only thing to travel to the ISS though. And coming back down to Earth now, as the UK has unveiled its plan to ban new vehicles that are totally powered by petrol or diesel being sold after 2030. This comes as one of the points in a 10-point plan that the Prime Minister of the UK unveiled earlier today, which also includes investment into offshore wind farms, carbon capture, protecting nature and nuclear power. It accelerates the plans already in place to make the UK a net zero emissions country by 2050. It also comes before the delayed COP26 UN summit that will take place in Glasgow next year, which is seen as the most important round of climate change talks since the Paris Agreement in 2015. While the announcement has been praised by many, critics say that the proposed £4 billion allocated to implement this plan is not enough. Up next is an exciting paper that has rewritten the evolutionary history of the true seals. These animals, the phocids, are made up of two separate groups, the northern phocines and the southern monokines, which were both thought to have evolved in the North Atlantic, before two members of the monokines crossed the equator, the elephant seals and the Antarctic seals. The third monokine group, the monk seals, were thought to have been exclusively northern and subtropical during their entire evolution. However, this paper describes a Pliocene monk seal from New Zealand, which shows that all three members of the monokines actually once coexisted and mainly evolved in the southern hemisphere instead, before reinvading the north. The new research also shows that true seals crossed the equator about eight different times in their history, a fascinating discovery about these remarkable animals. And now over to Ben, holding someone who doesn't really look like they want to be there. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news for this last week is the fantastic discovery of the first dinosaur remains to be found in Ireland. The paper describing these fossils explains how several specimens from Lower Jurassic rocks in Northern Ireland had been suspected to be from dinosaurs, and this analysis finds that two of these specimens are indeed dinosaurian in origin. One is found to be a partial left femur from a basal thyreophoran and has tentatively been assigned to Scalidosaurus, while the other one is a left tibia from some kind of neotheropod, the identity of which cannot be said for certain. Not only are these the first dinosaurs identified from anywhere in Ireland, but also some of the most westerly in Europe, and some of only a few known from this particular stage in the Jurassic. And finally is another remarkable dinosaur discovery, this time from the early Jurassic of Argentina. A new dinosaur has been named and described, Bagualia alba, which is identified as the oldest eusauropod, basically true sauropods, so far known to science. This new discovery therefore helps paleontologists to determine how and when the eusauropods came to dominate as the major large herbivores on land, finding that it seems to have happened after a massive magmatic event in southern Gondwana between 180 and 184 million years ago, which occurred at the same time as severe changes to the climate and a decrease in floral diversity. As can be determined from looking at records from other places, these changes were part of a global warming and mass extinction event at the end of the early Jurassic, which appears to have been what allowed the true sauropods to flourish. So lots of brilliant paleontology news this week then. Back to Doug in the studio. 
That's it for 7 Days of Science this week. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've had a lovely week, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.